Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to Bineka Online Toastmasters Club. My name is Natalie. I'll be the acting SAA as our SAA cannot make it to our meeting today. Before we start our meeting, we will see the housekeeping video, which is one of the legacy, something that we're very proud of at Bineka Online. So enjoy. <music> Awesome. And as Alicia has pointed out the emergency exit direction, we're going to open this meeting by calling our club president, Toastmaster Benjamin Whitaker. Yes. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another fantastic opportunity to just get better with cool people. And that's one of the cool things today, our, our theme is mystical. Was it mystical? Oh, no. Mystical nights, yes. Mystical nights, and what does that really kind of mean? It could be like, you know, mystery, magic, something, something a little crazy sometimes, unexpected. So hopefully we can have something unexpected tonight um, to kind of get out of the norm a little bit, and we can learn something new from a whole bunch of our speeches. So I'm glad everyone is here. And again, if you are a guest today, our breakdown of our our motto. Our values here at Binica is ABC. Appreciate our club members, build each other up, and celebrate our successes. So welcome uh, our was it area director, Apri is our GE, and our guest evaluator, Jenison, aka Coach Ribawa. Cool. Nice. I'm gonna, glad to hear you. So without further ado, let's get it. Over to our postmaster of the evening. Me. Hello again. Welcome back. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. All right. Last week, I had the pleasure of going to Empire Toastmasters Club. And then this week, also, my free time, I went to uh, an old club I did. I went to when I was during the pandemic. In back in my home state of Arizona. And we talk about in the beginning when we were discussing roles and should we have roles. One of the fun things that a lot of American clubs do, and I think it would be terrible for any international club really to do, unless you wanted to really stress people out, was the uh counter. They have bells. <laughs> Anytime you use the word uh or but, and so they will ding you, you know. And they asked me about that, like being an Indonesian. I'm like, uh, it would not be a great idea, even for myself. I would not appreciate it um, like that. You know, I do that quite a bit. But with non-native English speakers, that would be a good way to not have anybody in your club if you just dinged for two hours. It's not really a good way to grow, in my opinion, especially for new speakers. I think it's terrible. But you do learn some things from the clubs and Empire Toastmasters. They taught me um, that we could add extra elements to our club. And the Exco's, we're going to decide, like, 
Empire Toastmasters has a, a stand-up comedy session, right? And I think that'd be kind of fun to kind of add that. I wouldn't necessarily want some of the people from Empire Toastmasters to bring their comedy here. Not really funny, in my opinion. But humor is subjective. He knows who I'm talking about. Not he. He knows who I'm talking about. Right? And he's not here. I'll tell him later. Anyways, but I think it's still a good idea because no matter if we're not funny or not funny, um, or we are funny, it's a good opportunity to try to really change like a different way of delivering without it necessarily counting as a speech, but just really short one to two minutes where we can kind of try to break the tension because sometimes it can be really serious and we want to be able to have fun as well as be serious and kind of express different emotions. And I always thought as well as when I taught drama and I took drama, there's one thing that we do is where we take a song and we present it as a speech. Right? You don't sing it. It's really hard not to because, you know, in our head, we're going to hear the rhythm. But the idea is to take the songs, emotions and, and lyrics and actually present it with our hand gestures, vocal variety, body language. And we did that in drama class as a fun way. Now, of course, I did really bad in high school for that because I took a corny white guy took a really hardcore rap song and did it in front of the class and everyone laughed at me. But And then that's fine, but I started laughing on stage also, which is not fine. But the idea is to kind of, kind of go out of the norm, to kind of make things fun and we can promote it to bring people in for that little session uh, we can add. So as a club, we'll kind of figure that out a little bit more. All right, so as I said, Mystic Night is our theme. Got two speakers that are going to be here. We have a guest, Liani. Liani, are you there? Hello. Uh, hi. Yeah, Hello. you want to say where you're coming from? How did you hear from us? Or how did you uh, hear about us? All right. So let me. So I'm from SCBD Toastmasters Club. I just saw the announcement on the District 87 from Natalie. That's awesome. Hey, communication works. That's one I, thing I think a lot of the American clubs don't do uh, is one, you know, the rest of the world uses WhatsApp and it's really easy to connect with everyone, especially in Indonesia, where American clubs kind of just don't even know who each other exists for the most part, in my opinion, in some, in some standards, in some states. But I'm glad you're here, Leonie. Welcome. And you said you're from S. E what? SCBD Toastmasters Club. SCBD, You've okay. been there, the Ben. You uh -huh. won the pickup line battle. Yeah, in Jakarta, right? Yeah, in Jakarta. Yeah, you said it really fast, so I was trying to like catch it up. All right, excellent. Thank you for visiting us, and hopefully, you get a chance to speak during table topics. And uh, is it Jenison? You, sir, are an actual role taker today. But I still want to know what club you're from and who told you or asked you or Vaughn told you to be an evaluator. I was fallen told by Natalie, but of course, it's always welcome to end the week on a high note, let's say. So that, yeah, because one of my curses is if the Sunday and the Monday is too different, yeah, my energy just drops. And the week suddenly, yeah, becomes really bad. And this is a good way to level the energy of the Sundays and the Mondays for me. Excellent. Thank you. I love it. Good way to do it as well, I think. Also, for your Monday to really start out well, here's some unsolicited advice for all of you. If you really want your Monday to do start off with a bang, get up early and go to the gym. I'm telling you, uh, it does work. How do I know? Uh, I don't know. Four and a half years in the Army, and I played sports. I don't do it. I, I try to, but I, I, I'd rather go in the afternoon. But I'm telling you, it does have this weird kind of, like, shock the body where you actually have a little bit more energy throughout the day. Or you hate yourself because you're really sore. Either way, it's different. Right? Mystical night, man. Mystical night. All right. So let's go. We have a fun meeting and we have a whole team. So let me introduce our general evaluator. And this guy, he's pretty cool for uh, 
you know, volunteering this opportunity to be the general evaluator. He's our area director. He comes all the way from Milan Toastmasters Club, which is where I was two weeks ago. I didn't get to see him, but so close, man. Uh, welcome, area director, Opry. Okay, thank you, Ben. Ben, uh, are you already in Malang two weeks ago? <laughs> you got you don't see me. Okay, and tonight I will be serve as G general evaluator. So basically, my job for tonight is to evaluate the meeting from beginning to the end. Make sure the meeting can run smoothly. And of course, as general evaluator, I don't work alone. And so I will introduce my team for tonight. And first, we have a timer by the Master Kesa. So, please welcome to Master Kesa to introduce Hello, your everyone. role as a timer. My name is Kesha. I will be the timer for today's meeting. So, we have two prepared speech speakers for today, each with different time limits. So, I'm going to go deep into that. The first one is for Toastmaster Intan. Your minimal time limit minimum is nine minutes. And that's going to be for green. So green is nine, and then yellow is 12 minutes, and then red is 15 minutes, which, you know, if it's red, then you have around three seconds to wrap up your speech. And then the second one is Toastmaster Natalie. So the green is going to be two minutes, and then yellow is two minutes, 30 seconds, and red is three minutes. And then as usual for our table topics is one to two minute speech. So green is going to be one minute. Yellow is going to be one minute, 30 seconds. And red is going to be two minutes. And the last one is for evaluators, speech evaluators. Green is two minutes. Yellow is two minutes, 30 seconds. And red is three minutes. So no worries, I'm going to share all of these in the comment section. So in case you missed it, you can look back on it. So back to you, GE. Okay, thank you, that's Master Kaisha. And next, uh, since we decided to skip the grammarian and also a counter for tonight, and now I would like to call our ballot counter. We have Toastmaster Natalie. So we welcome Toastmaster Natalie to introduce your Thank you, our G. Apri. Hi, I'm back as your forever ballot counter. My name is Natalie and my role for tonight, as well as the other meeting, is to host the Zoom meeting and launch the ballot poll. So at the end of the evaluation session, I will launch the poll and you can choose your favorite speakers in prepared speeches, in table topic speeches, as well as speech evaluators. At the end of the meeting, we will announce it together with either GE or the TOM. Back to you, Apri. Hey, thank you, Natalie. And yeah, I think that's all for my team introduction. And we will meet again in the evaluation session. Now I will give our control back to our Tom. That's what I'm doing. That's Master on the meeting, Benjamin Mataker. So welcome. That's me. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much, Postmaster Apri. And again, you guys are lucky. You don't have an a counter or a GE today. So no one's here to tell you how bad you are. Also, on the other hand, no one's here to tell you how good you are. So regulate yourself. Right? Just have positive affirmations. I spoke. Yes. Awesome. Right? That's the hard part. Anyways, great. So let's get started. I believe, let me just double check. Mm -hmm. GE introduces his team. Great. Our first, wait a minute. First speaker. There we go. Our first speaker. Is she ready? Ah, she, there she is. All right, great. Our first speaker, Postmaster Intent. She's going to be evaluated uh, again, by Toastmaster Jensen, and her speech is on uh, Pathway Presenta Presentation Mastery Project, uh, Lesson Level 1 Project for Managing a Difficult Audience. You know, these are one of those ones you want to have a big, giant crowd available. But it's okay. Got to manage a difficult audience, even if it's small or big, no matter what. 
All right, so I'm going to have uh, Toastmaster Jensen introduce Toastmaster Inten. Thank you, Ben. Toastmaster Intan, today your objective is to practice handling a difficult audience. My friends in the audience, Toastmaster Intan has prepared a speech and the Toastmasters of the meeting has prepared people to distract her. And of course, according to the manual, you may only distract once. I've seen many clubs do this wrongly. You may only distract once. Once the speaker has addressed you properly, please stop distracting. Thank you, Intan. And yeah, have fun on stage. It's gonna be fun. Have your brother be my guest. The stage is yours. Thank you, Toastmaster Jensen, and thank you, Toastmaster Ben. Hello, Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, today I would like to tell you about my recently hobbies that I would like. I really like to do workout. Like every single day, I would spend hour or two hours to do workout, hit the gym or running or swimming, something like that. But what happened whenever I posted on my social media in order just to track actually my progress i don't have any intention to like oh this is me doing my workout and look at me no just i just wanted to make a track and create a journal so at the end of the day i would be like looking myself yesterday oh i'm better than yesterday i'm stronger than yesterday um in time in time can i just ask you a question why would we need to have a hobby when when it should be a part of life of being able to just exercise like what what why should it be a hobby yeah it keeps us alive alicia because all the day long we have to do the routines very boring and we have to do it like the whole life so we have to make like make just some things to do that create sparks and joy like ben said it gives us uh the energy and bring back alive and after that, we could do like the routine again, being happy and healthy and but, being a positive. But I could go to McDonald's and, and I could have joy and happiness if I went to yeah. McDonald's. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the point. So actually, this is my choice. Uh, that is getting McDonald's is your choice. So whatever, whatever actually that makes you spark and joy and give you positive energy, that is actually the point. Thank okay, you. Okay, so yeah. I could go to McDonald's? And find joy in that. Yeah, but uh, this is the point. Uh, easy choice makes hard life, but hard choice makes easy life. You cannot. Uh, actually, this is my point of view that if we make like okay. hard choice, <laughs> like doing home workout and hurt our body later on, we will enjoy the the result. This is not about uh, one day or one. Yeah, we could do like shopping. We could do like. Um, cheating day mcdonald's and eat something delicious but maybe it will be our limitation so that is in my point thank you alicia can i continue <laughs> well this I, is... I feel i feel yeah yeah i think you've answered the question <laughs> well okay that is actually what i'm going to say that there are two kinds of comments um, on my social media, the positive one, giving me support, like, wow, you're strong, keep keep on fighting, great job, Intan, that kind of comment, like, giving me uh, just never-ending support, and um, someone actually uh, will make me happy if they say, like, hey, can I join you with, with the workout? Can I join you with running next Sunday? So something like that, give me the positive energy and I think I could spread the, the positive vibes but the negative ones would be like this oh how could you do that how could you leave your house how could you leave your kids for several hours just to do that things I cannot imagine that do the things like you or other comments like oh actually I want to do things like you but I don't have enough time super hectic all day long I don't have any energy something like that well, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce myself. I'm a mom of two, and as for me, 
becoming a mom means you have to be the strongest person on earth. You have to be healthy, happy, and also wealthy. Yeah. And this is the hardest job on earth. And uh, besides being a full house mom, I also become a working mom. That is means you have double job with only half time pay. Yeah, that is the point. And the point is we're not allowed to be six. And if you are not able to do things like you just lay out in the bed, the whole family will be messed up, even if only one day or a half day. So we have to take care of the family, manage the household, the financial. In short, uh, becoming a mom is like the person in charge in everything. And we have to dedicate the whole life for the family. In order to do that, we have to be, we have to keep our priority first, being healthy and being happy. Fellow Toastmaster, well, once I heard this story from my friends that when they were little kids, they have a very perfect family that she has a mom who will dedicate the whole life for the family, even sacrifice herself, not doing something joyful like uh, going with her friends or just uh, enjoy time being alone. The whole time, the whole energy only give to, to the family. But after that, uh, sadly, uh, she does, because she doesn't take care of herself, later on, she, uh, her mom suffering from, from a stroke or something like that. And now the lesson is like, it's okay, mom, you can uh, take a break. You can have uh, your hobby. You can have fun with your friends and just leave us as your kids will be fine with with as long yeah say for example like five years or 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 six years it's okay but i will not leave my kids like in one month or two months uh, just you can you can uh see the condition so that is the lesson from the story and whoever we are a father a mother a daughter a teacher a tech keeper we have to put our priority like our health in the first place we have to stay fit why because we will not giving a burden to the family in the end of the day so actually uh, your family do not need you to be a perfect mom a perfect daughter or a perfect father just they want you to be happy and fit but how to do that actually uh, we have to create habits so I read the book like Atomic Habits. You don't have to change the whole uh, habit in one in one day. So in the whole year, you just need to make 1% of uh, progress. Something like, oh, today I don't have any motivation to, to do workout. Oh, it's okay. So I will spend 15 minutes today and tomorrow maybe 20 minutes and the other day 30 minutes so that is okay so we don't have to look other person oh if she can do that i have to do that no it's it's changing it's changing the the priority so yeah uh, okay. i have a question Somebody, yeah i think uh in, instead of reading a book i think uh, uh calling a trainer is more benefic beneficial to 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 get you more fit compared with reading a book because uh, we don't have a time to read a book and instead we can hire other people like uh, doing some hire a trainer so that it can be more effective yeah from uh, yeah yeah of course um in my point of view we have in one day we have three wins like mental win spiritual win and I guess it's physical win. Like you have to uh, create the connection with the gut, and also we have to fit our our how to say our intellectual maybe by reading a book, by discuss uh, something, and last one we have to train our our physical. So that is actually the three mental health for me, Apri. 
And those things are really important to keep us balanced, not only like, oh yeah, reading a book is not important. And yeah, we don't have the time, but now we have many, uh, how to say, you can open the Kindle, you can open your uh, smartwatch to read the book. If you don't have time, you can bring the ebook every time. So it keep you focused, it keep you not distracted by, by reading the book will, will fit your, your mind. Is that enough, Anit, Abdi? Maybe. Abhi, I will ask you something later. Okay, okay, thank you. So how to make, uh, how to create the habit? So actually we have to make it fun and we have to make it, uh, how to say? Mm, say for example, if you want to start running, so you can buy the outfit that you like, the outfit that keeps you, oh, spark and joy, don't run with your uh, pajamas and not, not do your makeup. But yeah, you can still do your makeup and buy a nice hat and sunglasses and nice shirt. And that will be um, keep your spirit, makes you uh, become fun doing, doing that, uh, creating this habit. And also your shoes. So that's why if you saw people in a marathon event, their outfit was awesome, right? Their shoes, their their shirt, and their sunglasses because they put their effort, their best effort in it. And the next one, um, we have to manage our mind. Do not take uh, the burden as uh, too hard on your shoulder. Yes, it's okay to, to have you have the responsibility and you have to manage your time. And, oof, it's okay. If you feel like stress, you can sometimes just go out with your friends to karaoke and go into the beach, something like that. But do not forget your responsibility and have a friends or have a spouse to speak with. That is actually important for, for our well-being. Oh, Inten, I have yeah. something I would and really appreciate to add. Earlier you said that, you know, about being a good parent, you know, when you're doing your hobbies or activities. As a new parent, anytime I go do something, and you kind of, some people decide to like make you feel guilty for not being there. You know, and the idea is to be able to go do your hobby so you can come back and have more happiness and, you know, kind of ready to kind of be around, the, you know, your, your child. So what do you do with the haters out there that tell you you're not being a good mom because you're always out running and listening to your ebooks? Yeah. So that is actually the, the, the problematic becoming a new mom. So maybe if I become, I have a newborn, I will not leave them until maybe two years because I have to breastfeed or something like that. But as a father, uh, maybe we have to give like, uh, how to say, the manage, managing time. Like, okay, you can go 30 minutes, do whatever you like and come back with happier. And if you have a happy mood, you can breastfeed and your apa asia will be very uh, your kids will also get the benef benefits from from this thing so i don't care about about others uh, because they don't give us any money or or anything for for my for my for my life so i don't take any credit for for the haters out there so i just show them that how happy i am so they will like uh something like that Good luck, Ben. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> well, so, ladies and gentlemen, so it's up to you. So how you can change your day, uh, one day or, or day one. We still have two months until the end of, of the year, like the October, November, and December. We still have three years to change like the habits or you want to improve into a better person. You decide.
one day or day one. Back to you, those master. All right, excellent job. Okay, so not as many distractions as a typical uh, distractor speech. So I think Intan got a little lucky there. Anyways, good job. Also, like I mentioned before, uh, Intan's speech is all about working out and posting pictures. I posted, I don't post pictures of me working out very often at all because, you know, I just don't like stupid comments. But the last time I did, it was like at a cool accomplishment where I got to bench press uh, 50 uh, kilogram dumbbells in each hand. I'm like, wow, I'm so strong. And then my friends who are actually really stronger than me, like, hey, bro, isn't that your warm up? They're having a cross conversation. So this is what guys do. We make fun of each other. And anyways, I'm like, ah, man, I thought I did something cool. But my friends who are about six feet and they're, you know, 200 pounds and their muscles are like this. And they kind of do 100 pound dumbbells, you know, as a warm up. And I finally achieved it. I felt so sad. I'm like, oh. even though they're making fun of me and they don't mean really any harm. That's kind of a male way of doing it. But yeah, a lot of people, uh, you know, social media is kind of an evil place to be sometimes where it. You know, you do something because you want to do it for yourself or your family or, you know, to support somebody. And there's always someone out there that's going to kind of try to cut you down. So keep doing what you're doing in 10. You know, I like working out, but I don't like running. And you like to run. So great time. All right. Too hot for the gram. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So our second speaker is going to be a distinguished Toastmaster, Natalie. But it's kind of like an engaging humor pathway. Level four, uh, uh, wait, LP, lesson, let's see, level, that's all backwards. I think it's like level four, project one, power of humor of the impromptu speech. So beforehand, she gave me four categories, kind of like individual table topics that I get to choose to give her. So before we do that, before I give her these impromptu topics, I'm going to have her evaluator introduce a little bit more information, and then I'll fire one of these topics her way. So distinguished Toastmaster Alicia Curtis, please get a little more information about Natalie's. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that, Ben. So the purpose of this project is for Natalie to develop a method for giving impromptu speeches and practice adapting rehearsed stories during a presentation. I'm going to break this down because it is quite a detailed um, project that she's completing. Two to three minute speeches delivered at the same meeting um, and also so two so two speeches and they're going to be two to three minutes each so for the timer green on two yellow on two and a half red on three so once she hits three minutes 30 can you please just like go time's up because we really need to be on time. Now for the notes for the evaluator, because this is quite detailed, I want to read these out so that everyone can understand what we're actually looking for. The Toastmaster of the day. So Ben will choose a random topic from the list that has been provided. Natalie has provided four topics. The member, so Natalie will complete two speeches, one on the first topic drawn and one on the second um, also drawn. The Toastmaster will select the topics one at a time only selecting the second topic after the first speech is completed. Evaluate the member on both speeches. If one is significantly better than the other, you may choose to score the more successful speaking speech and make notes about the reasons you think the second speech was less successful. As you evaluate, consider the member's poise and presentation, the humour of their stories and how well they connected their stories to the topic. Thank you, Ben. All right. First speech topic, Chinese family. Maybe some of you wonder, how does it feel being raised up in a Chinese family? Well, it's like being in a zoo. You're surrounded by family members who will put on different animal traits depending on the situation, just like what happened to me. As a student, when I didn't do my homework, my tiger mom came. You are so lazy. You don't have a future. 
And then as a working adult, when I didn't save enough from my first salary, my elephant uncle came. Ah, Natalie, uncle still remember ya, when I was your age, I already saved enough money in three years to put up deposit for my house. And now, as a single woman in my 30s, whenever my birthday comes, my meerkat on came. Huh, not yet. Huh. Don't worry, she'll be back next year. So yeah, that's the dynamic of Chinese family. And all of Chinese family want to be successful, but we don't want to waste money to pay for unnecessary stuff, like life coaches. Why should we? Every Chinese family already has a life coaches. We call it our auntie. Like when I first did open mic stand-up comedy, I said to my aunt, Auntie, I finally did an open mic stand of comedy and people clapping for me. My aunt looked at me. Natalie, you stupid or what? You make people laugh for free? Now notice the four step of my aunt's coaching strategy. Step one, show empathy. Step two, call my name, Natalie. Step three, ask rhetorical question. You stupid or what? Step four, state the fact. You make people laugh for free? Now imagine if I go out with a random guy who is ugly, jobless, and mannerless, my auntie will be, Natalie, you idiot or what? Better stay single. That's why I'm still single. Back to you. Living with an aging relative. I still live with my 75 years old mom. No, no, no. Not because of responsibility, but because of love. Yes, I love her. Money, inheritance, car, houses, and of course herself. This meeting is recorded, right? And what you might not know is that I used to also live with my 80 years old forever single aunt. And she wanted people, including me, to call her Miss Susie. I kid you not. When the three-year-old neighbor called her Grandma Susie, Grandma Susie, she said, don't call me Grandma, call me Miss Susie. Yeah, God put people in our life for a reason, right? He put my aunt in my life to teach me patience, understanding, and to make sure I get married. Because I don't want to end up like her, being old and bitter and lonely. I mean, I still understand her struggle with technology. Like her phones, you know, sometimes it restarted by itself. Probably because the memory was full or it just got fed up with all of her comments. So when I check her phone, it was 64 gigabyte, quite a lot of memory. And then I checked the gallery. She only had like 96 photos. Then I found out it was the WhatsApp people, the WhatsApp messages that accounted 54 gigabytes full of videos and photos that were automatically saved. Like she had these five minutes videos with dramatic music and suspenseful narrator and saying, be careful, 
Do not click the APK. Do not open the apps. Do not get hypnotized when you go to the bank. And she also had like this 10 minutes of videos with cheerful and loud music and said, okay, let's do the elderly exercise. One, two. And she had like 10,000 messages like that. Not to mention that little poster that said, Selamat hari Jumat, semoga Tuhan memberkati. AKA, happy Friday, may God bless you. Or worse, all of this long text with the big flower on the back and saying, may your sleep get so restful and peaceful and blissful, just like this flower blooming. Yeah, basically something like that. So I guess God put me in my aunt's life as her WhatsApp cleaner. Back to you. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. And, you know, it's always kind of funny. Uh, one so is an American, white male American, learn more stereotypes from the horse's mouth. Not calling Natalie a horse. It's a figure of speech, right? It means you're going to hear it from the horse's mouth so you know someone's not lying, right? So trying to hear stereotypes is kind of funny for me. And a lot of stand-up comedy is built on stereotypes. Um, and, you know, even in this day and age of, like, cancel culture, sometimes fun to laugh at different cultures, struggles and such. Also with, uh, you know, living with someone older or just people that have never experienced something. So give you an example. Uh, my wife and her family just came back uh, from Surabaya and – uh, if you guys want to know, like sometimes when you look on airlines, there's really cheap tickets. And right now, uh, if you take a Batik airline from Surabaya to Bali and the flight's at six in the morning Surabaya time, you can get business class for like a million rupiah. So I booked three people in an infant child business class, and it was hilarious because I wasn't there. But my wife told me her parents were like, why is everyone going to the back? Why is everyone sitting? Is so it's something you get to see a, a new experience, not just because it's old, but just because it's just not there. So new things are kind of fun to kind of witness other people experiencing them. Um, and a lot of times it is old people or little kids. That's a circle of life, right? When you're little, everything is new, and when you're like middle age, you're kind of in the world, and when you're old, everything is new again, right? That's how it works. So thank you, Natalie, for that. Great job. I think, can we get a uh, timer's reports? Miss Timer. Yes. So all the speeches are within the time range. So for Intan is 13 minutes, 50 seconds. And Natalie's first speech is 2 minutes, 57. And the second speech is 3 minutes. Excellent job. All right. And now, let me just double check the agenda. Got it. All right. So now the time is here. That everybody gets to really pay attention because you might have your voice, your name called to speak. Let's welcome our table topic master, postmaster Nancy. Thank you, Tom. Good evening, fellow Toastmaster, friends, and also guests. My name is Nancy, and I will be serving as the Table Topic Master for tonight. Well, Table Topic enables members to develop the skill of impromptu speaking. Table Topic helps to train members to quickly organize and express their thoughts. You can think of the Table Topic speech as a mini speech with an opening, a body, and also a, a conclusion. Well, in today's meeting, our theme is Mystical Nights. And I have prepared five questions. So I need five volunteers to speak for tonight. Um, so let's just start without any further ado. Who wants to go first? Who want okay, Toastmaster E.T. 
Hello. Okay, I have five questions. One, two, five. Which number will you pick? Uh, five. Okay, number five. Uh, the question is, have you ever experienced something strange or mystical at night? Have you ever experienced something strange or mystical at night? Your time is one to two minutes. Don't forget to use the word of the day, arcane. Am I audible visible before I start? Okay, I'll start. Once upon a day, I went into a village with my family to visit one of my family. It is in Probolinggo. Probolinggo is a city in East Java, I believe, if they are not moving their state. And I got some of those premonitions. I do believe that I got a gift from God to see something that should not be seen. And that was during the children. I was terrified when I pointed out to someone outside of the door. Mom, who is that? My mom said nothing. There's nobody there, Elios. But I went gone into the description. I said this to her. Mom, I said a man brought his head in front of me and gave me the head. When I look up a head, there is no head. The head is in front of me, in front of the stomach. And that time, my mother just shoots me down and said, Elias, you, you see nothing. Just believe in God. I was terrified. And I keep on praying. Go, go, go away. Go. And it's still there. And I was crying so much that time. And I was asking to go back home exactly at that night. Well, that's terrifying. Back to you, Titi Amansi. Thank you, Toastmaster Iti. What a what, what a horror experience. I can imagine if I were in your position, I don't know what to do. Thank you for your response. We are moving on to the next question. Um, anyone who wants to volunteer? We have, okay. Toastmaster DTM Alicia Curtis. Uh, yes. There are four numbers left, one, two, four. Which number would you like to pick? Number two, please. Number two, okay. Question num. Okay, wait. Okay. Question number two. If the star, if the stars could grant you one wish, what would you wish for? If the stars could grant you one wish. What would you wish for? Don't forget to use the word of the day, Arcane. You can speak whenever you're ready. Thank you, Nancy. Well, the stars are in the background here, shooting there and waiting upon me to answer this wonderful question about what my wish would be and what would be granted. Now, I've got more than one because I think, you know, when you're my age at 41, when you're told you're an ancient fossil by the 20-year-olds at university, you're going to have to up the ante. So my first wish is to find Mr. Wright. 
that is Mr. Right. So I would love to fall in love with Peter. I want a boyfriend. I want to get married. I do not want kids. Big fat no. So that's my first wish. Has it been granted? No. So that is my first wish, of course. Then I have my second wish, and I think everyone knows what my second wish is. Natalie, what is my second wish? Come on, you know my second wish. Uh, to eat macas for free for the rest of your life? Yes, yes. I would love to eat McDonald's for the rest of my life or macas for the rest of my life. I would love to invest into a McDonald's because, let's be honest, McDonald's is not about the food when it comes to a business concept it's actually about the real estate and I sound I know it sounds ridiculous and very old-fashioned and old of me but I would rather own the McDonald's for the real real estate value than the actual food value though I do appreciate the food value these are two of my wishes now I have other wishes of course I would love to be able to meet a Canada goose because Canada geese or geese have got teeth and barb teeth on their tongue, so I'd love to do that. So they are my three wishes, to meet a Canada goose in Ohio, because I really want to meet a Canada goose in Ohio with barbed teeth on its tongue. I also really want to invest, of course, into McDonald's, not because of the food, but because of the real estate. No, that's a lie. I actually really want to invest into it because of the food. But above all, I want to find Mr. Right. I want to find my husband. I want to find Peter. He is somewhere in Australia. So anyone out there, if you know where Peter is, pick up the phone and grant me my wish tonight. Back to you, Nancy. Okay, thank you, Toastmaster Alicia. What a nice speech. Well, hopefully you can make your wish come true. But for McDonald's, um, I think do not make it true. It's not good for your health. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are moving on to the third speaker. I think I would like to invite VTM Leoni. Okay. Hi. Thank you. Do you want to join the table topic? Yes, am I audible? Yes, you are. So I have three questions left, number three, four, and, and number one, three, and four. Which number would you like? Lucky number four. Okay, lucky number four. The question is, do you believe that the night has its own kind of magic? Why or why not? Do you believe that the night has its own kind of magic? Why or why not? Don't forget to use the word of the day, arcane. Do I believe that the night has its own kind of magic? Absolutely. I think the night has its own arcane. Why? Because before human race invented electricity, lights, the nights are so dark. And because it we couldn't see anything. Can you imagine that as a mammal? We're not used to the darkness. We don't have the sight to see through the darkness, unlike other mammals. So how do we survive before we invented electricity, the light? But we did survive. Because I believe that human race has invented something to do in the middle of the night, which actually creates the advancement, which is sleeping. And that is the most powerful thing that human race has. I love to sleep. It replenishes my energy. It replenishes my Oh mine. So, yes, the night has its own kind of magic because that is where we could dream of a place that we could never be and we could dream about a life 
what we want it to be. And therefore, we could invent all of this because we dream at night and we make it at in the morning. So, yes, I do believe that the night has its own kind of magic. Back to you, we will talk with Master. Thank you, VTM Leoni, for your speech. Yes, it's true that everyone that is invented in this world, it is all started by our dream. And most of the time, we are dreaming at night. Even it's not dreaming in the sleeping, but we set up, usually we set up everything at night. Thank you for your response. Moving on to the fourth speaker, I still have two questions left. I would like to invite Toastmaster Yvonne to participate in table topic. Toastmaster Yvonne, are you there? Sure, sure. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, yes oh, you are. You. Sorry, my camera not working now. Sorry, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, the So I have two numbers left, number one and number three. Which number would you like? Uh, number one. Thank you. Okay. Question number one. What is your favorite thing about nighttime? What is your favorite thing about nighttime, Toastmaster Yvonne? Ah, thank you so much, Table Topics. Masters, what is my favorite uh, thing at my nighttime? I think actually the nighttime for me is really a uh, uh, arcane uh, thing because uh, for my personal, my homework uh, from my program uh, just a uh, couple weeks ago, I love it so much than before. Uh, because during my program, actually it gives me uh, more the thing about the, the arcade or things at the night. Because every night during my program, every night actually, do you know, a mantra is a famous in this world uh, from His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. It seems, uh, Om Mami Mami Hong, Om Mami Mami Hong. I like it so much. Uh, it's learned before because it remind me what is the good thing in my life. And from last song especially, it's almost 20 days nice. I like it so much. I think the singing is always ringing in my mind. So it makes me always not uh, can go sleeping. But I like so much because it's give me, it's remind me, it's inspire me a lot. What is our goal? What is my goal as a human being? Uh, because during my program in the Indian, I see a lot of uh, people, especially I close to some grinder, brother and sister there, and uh, from their from their body, and uh, I learn a lot. So every night. Before I go sleeping, actually, it's uh, during that time before I go sleeping, I just thinking about a lot of things. It's inspired of me. Of what is my goal in my life? Like uh, His Holiness uh, did goes to us. What is our responsibility? We must know. We have to help each other, especially. For some people, they need us help. Thank you. Back to your table topic, Master. Thank you, Toastmaster Yvonne, for your 
response. Ladies and gentlemen, I have one more question left. Anyone who wants to volunteer? Okay, I saw Toastmaster Genison Wibawa raise his hand. So the question is, If you could explore another world at night, what would you hope to find? If you could explore another world at night, what would you hope to find? Don't forget to use the word of the day, arcane. Okay. Um, can you repeat the topic once more? The, the topic is mystical nights. Or if the you could question. explore another world at night, what would you hope to find? Okay. My fellow Toastmasters, I'm sure you've had the same experience as what I'm about to share with you. It's the middle of the night. It's been a long day. You are tired after a long day of work. And you sit down, you lay down on your bed, and then suddenly... You forgot to do something really important. Or you remember you got rejected in high school. Or you remember something really embarrassing you did several years ago. Like more than 10 years ago. I think that's one of the magic of night is that it always seems to take me to the world of the past. It always reminds me of the bad things that happened in the past. It always reminds me of the things I did not do today. It always reminds me of the shortcomings I have in my life. Friends, where does your night take you? Is it a world of the past or a world of the future? Recently, it was beneficial for me in a sense is that on 31st of December last year, I was going to sleep thinking, okay, tomorrow is going to be the new year. But then psh, the night took me to a different world. It reminded me that I used to really want to be able to master Japanese. And I've never been able to. And I was like, the night was whispering, you're going to regret it if you never learn Japanese in your life. So the next day, the 1st of January, I made it my mission to learn it, start learning. And of course, that means I am quite a bit of fluent in Japanese right now. So friends, does your night take you to the world of the past or does it open possibilities for the future? Don't forget that it's all linked together because knowing your shortcomings in the past is actually a way to a better world forward. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Genison, for your response. Well, it's true that our life is linked either from the past and also for the future. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am done with table topic section. Thank you for all speakers who have volunteered themselves to participate and make this session so much fun. Thank you for sharing your experience. Hopefully we can learn from each speaker tonight. Now I will give it back to the Tom Toastmaster Ben. All right, great job. Table topic master Toastmaster Nancy. Real quick timers report already in the chat but all you say it in words use your words okay so for the table topics uh first of all i would like to clarify is the maximum time two minutes or two minutes 30 seconds two minutes and 30 seconds is the extra oh, okay. 30 seconds yep all right so in that case we have four qualified speakers for the ballot counter so the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth speakers are all qualified for the ballot counter. All right, awesome, great job. 
As always, next, we want to do, let me just double check. Uh, who we have, it's not on the agenda, but I think we should try to do a photo. Right, so, e-tool, come here. An e-tool in the army is an entrenching tool. It's like a shovel that does everything. So, not an insult. It's actually a compliment. So in the army, if your name started with E, we would just call you E tool. But his name is E T, so even more. Elios, are you there? I'm here, but not You're... sure why camera is here. Not... I don't know. You have your empire uh, marketing on there. That's probably why. There you go. Uh, okay, here. Oh. Uh. Okay, guys, let's take a photo. Give us your best pose in three, two, one, smile. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. One more, one more, one more. Sorry, it was not safe. Well, best smile in three, two, one. Okay, now your mystical night's pose. Whatever you interpret that to be. It can be scary, it can be wonderful, it can be dreamy, whatever it is. Mystical night pose. Okay, in three, two, one. Awesome. Back to you, Ben. All right. Great job. Thank you, Natalie. And now we are at, usually uh, our teachers come up to the uh, front and tell the students how much they need to improve, but let's go to our GE, the evaluation section, General Evaluator Apri. Okay, thank you, that's Master Ben, and hello everyone. Met with me again in the evaluation session, the heart of the master meeting. And now I will, we will start our first session, which is the speech evaluation session. And now I will call our first evaluator. We have Toastmaster Genishon. So, welcome Toastmaster Genishon to deliver your evaluation from our first speaker. Thank you, General Evaluator, and congratulations to Intan for such a wonderful speech and i think you managed to practice your skills at handling difficult audience really well now i have three reasons why i can confidently say you did incredible in this project first is that i see that you've strategically chosen a topic that we can all relate to which is work out and improving you know why because i skinny i can relate It's essential in a topic, especially a long topic, to choose something that we can all relate to. And since it's um, it's something that you also feasibly believe in, it's something that you look like you really want to transfer this message to the audience. That's why it impacts your the level of excitement when you are delivering this speech. Well done. Your topic was really nice. Second of all, it's a quite a long speech, right? It's quite a long speech, much longer than usual, nine to 15 minutes with many interruptions. And you managed to really keep the audience's attention throughout the speech with many lines such as, so after each question, I noticed that you said, ladies and gentlemen, after the question ends, that brings the attention back to you. So, and you also said back to my speech, okay? If you don't say back to my speech, the audience might still be thinking about Alicia's question. The audience might still be thinking about Apri's question, but you said back to my speech and the audience, okay, let's follow you back to your speech. That's amazing. And your structure is really well done. The audience can follow you from the start, from working out, from being in a family to improving and this is the third amazing thing in your speech in time is that there is something for the audience right it's not just 
you telling your experience, but there is something for the audience, which is improvement, atomic habits, how we can improve for the rest of the year, for the last three months of the year. That's amazing. And of course, since you mentioned atomic habits, I will give you something that will make your speech 1% better. And that is just one suggestion, Intan, which is to ask clarifying questions. When you were asked, I noticed that sometimes you were not sure whether um, the, the question asked was correct. There was even times when you answered Apri's question where it seems to me that you misunderstood the question. Yeah. What you can help you with this is to ask clarifying questions. So for example, so Apri, what you were asking is that this, this, this. Firstly, first thing, this helps Apri feel hurt. This makes the audience that us feel really hurt. Oh yeah, she knows what I'm talking about. Secondly, this gives you time to think. This gives you more time to think and process what you want to answer with. Okay? So that's the one improvement I want to see you next time. So I think you did remarkably in this project. Next time, ask clarifying questions. Just this one improvement will make you 1% better for sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tasmacar Gadison, for your improvement. Yeah, I believe asking more clarify questions can help your audience can be more heard. And now let's move on to the second evaluator. We have this thing is Tasmacar Alicia Curtis. You are welcome. This thing is Tasmacar Alicia. Thank you very much for that, Apri. When I look at these two speeches, I think, wow, how far Natalie has progressed over the last 10 years. I've known her in Toastmasters, and she has been in Toastmasters since 2015 or late 2014 when she joined. She was asked to deliver two speeches impromptu in the humorous speech path, and that was what she was focusing on tonight. The first one was Chinese family and I'll talk about that and then I'll talk about the second one living with an aging relative. I really enjoyed the first speech you could tell that she had really prepared ahead of time. The use of grammar was actually quite good in this particular speech. The use of personification which enhanced the presentation especially when she was describing her tiger mum, her elephant uncle and also her meerkat auntie. Now one recommendation I would suggest for that is instead of using um, African animals or one African animal and then two Asian animals, try and make them all symbolic to Asia. So I probably would have either used um, a Komodo dragon in one of those particular, um, maybe the meerkat auntie could have been the Komodo dragon or something that has, or a monkey, one of the monkeys or orangutan or something to really enhance the presentation because I'm thinking you've gone Asia, Asia, then Africa. So just trying to keep that all symbolic to Asia. I also enjoyed the way that you use the personalities and the characterization of the personification between the three parties. There was a lot of conflict. There was a lot of um, interrogation between the three and the way that you related to each one. So congratulations on that. One of the other points of the recommendation was the lack of articles, the, R are, and an in certain parts of the speech. This is really important, especially as a native English speaker. It's one of the things I was picking up tonight. Great timing overall and a great presentation, very humorous. The second one was living with an aging relative. Now, this for me was very interesting because I lived with a very old person myself and that was my dad. And I sometimes can relate to exactly what you said. Um, old, crusted, and you just absolutely want to have World War a billion with your family and your relative. I think it was really funny, especially with the way that you started. You talked all about the materialistic things about your father, uh, your mother, and then you go, oh yeah, and my mother as well. So I thought that that was really interesting how you grabbed the humor and you hooked us. That was your actual catch at the end. I felt that this presentation was actually a bit overly dramatic compared to the first presentation. Um, and I felt that the humor at times came across as a little bit difficult to understand. Now I'm Australian, I do understand Indonesian humor, but I'm not sure if there's anyone else outside of Indonesia in this particular 
um, audience tonight because there was a lot of Indonesian um, humor used there, which I can understand. I would just consider who is in your audience. For me, um, and again, great timing and great use of humor, especially with um, your parents, and it was very relatable. The one that I felt that stood out was actually the Chinese family because that was the more relatable for me. And I think some of the others actually were laughing more at that one than the second one. So for me, that was the winner, Chinese family. Back to you, Afri. Okay, thank you, Dosmasa Alicia, for your feedback. And I hope our speaker have insight how to improve your speech in the future. And now let's call our, our timer report. Does Master Asia? Is everybody, yes, is everybody thank able? you so much, GE Apri. So for the prepared speech speakers, everyone is eligible and every single speech by TM Natalie is also eligible. And then uh, for the table topics, as mentioned before, four speakers are eligible and that is the first, second, third, and fifth speakers. And for the evaluation session, um, I would like to clarify as well, is the time limit three minutes, 30 seconds? Correct. Yes, so for that, it will be automatic winner to the evaluator DTM Orisha. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And now let's call our ballot. Was my Natalie already for the voting? Yes, in one minute, I will launch the poll. Okay. Um, so you can give your evaluation. You can give your evaluation operation while we're waiting for the ballot. Yep. Uh, since we don't have a counter and also grammar, I will give the evaluation report for the next. So let's start from the beginning in the preparation. We start at six. PM a little bit a late three minutes and and I think I consider it's on time, which is congratulations. And uh, I see that in the beginning some raw wire is still not coming. So uh, I hope in the future meeting the raw wire can come on time. And I also noticed that there is a agenda adventure in the chat box for to download and in the opening. We have Natalie introduced the role by playing the video. So everyone know the rule of the meeting. And next we move on to the, oh, we have, already have polling. So everybody can poll now. Okay, let's continue. And now, that's my around the meeting. That's my Ben. What I really like about your perform performance today is really you have a really good energy and very enthusiasm. This make this meeting feel feel really really good. And you say hello to everyone. You introduce the agenda, and also you have a really good transition between the speaker and also between the session. And now at I think I don't have any recommendation for you because you're really good. <laughs> and now let's move on to the Tower Doic Master. We have Tasmata Nancy. You introduce the the time in the beginning. Also, you choose the member first to give the example. And you have a really good, you also have a good transition between participants. And also the team also really relatable. You also mentioned the word of the day in your session and you also put the topic in the chat box. And probably is additional improvement. You can uh, make summary from each speaker in the end. So everybody, everybody will know what the summary from each speaker they, they speak in the in your in the end of your session. And yeah, I think next next we move on to the evaluator. I think evaluator also really good job you using sandwich method, which is a is a balance between recommendation and also accommodation. And now we move on to the timer. We have plus matter Keisha. You use a clear plus matter background. Also, you give the report in the chat box. 
Uh, probably room for improvement you can use a hand gesture so that your screen will always on the upper left top of the screen so everybody will know uh, your the time and and unfortunately we tonight we don't have any we don't have uh, a counter and grammar yet. so probably in the future meeting we have that so it can make our meeting can be more complete and overall i really like what i like the most about this meeting is uh on time i think yeah and also most participant is turn on the video and also have the meeting have really smooth and have a good energy and which is pretty nice and yeah i think that's all for my evaluation for for tonight and i will give control back to our toastmaster of the meeting toastmaster Ben. All right. Okay. So just kind of confirming with our ballot counter before. Uh, you ready, Natalie? All right. Okay. So let me just share the screen. Okay, Ben. I'll give you the honor to announce. First, the evaluator, speaker, and then table topic. Okay. Are you going to type it in the chats? No, I'm sorry. It's on the screen. All right. Uh, yeah, I can't see it. So our winner for the evaluator is Alicia Curtis. As already mentioned, she wins by default. I like default victories. Uh, Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Oh, can, hang on. Can you help me, Ben? Because I'm yep. sharing. Can you make it like 50 50. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Awesome. Hold up one second. Let me host it in our chat. It's the fastest way to do that. Have you guys got a new chat? Uh, nope. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe we just, I don't know. All right, next. Best speaker. The best speaker is Natalie Chayade. And the ballot counter. Mm. Hold up. Let me close the chat real quick. Yeah, it makes it a little better. I can make sure to be 100% accountable. Okay, hold up. We need to get you actually uh, in. There we go. And get out of that. Hold the pose. Hold the pose. Hold the pose. Pink. Got it. And thank you. Last one. Paste. All right. All right. Last one. Table topics. Toastmaster Jenison Weibawa. All right. Smile. Oh, that's a great one. I'm keeping that. You don't get to choose. All right. We got it. You got it. Awesome. Let me, let's see. Let me see. Yeah, that's a great expression. He's so shocked. You'll see it. You'll okay. be a surprise. Okay. I'll see you, Ben. Okay. Excellent job. Oh my gosh, it's eight thirty. We're gonna get done a little early. Um, but as I said before in the beginning, as Benika, we're trying to create a kind of a, a little bit of a new kind of buzz in a sense. And we're going to do that in the future. So I wanted to wait. Now, I said this because I, I wanted to wait uh, until I had it down perfect, kind of give you an example of what I wanted to. But I decided, ah, let's just wing it and do it now. So again, in the future, we're going to discuss um, stand-up comedy hour. Again, E.T. is here. He's the one who kind of inspired it from Empire Toastmasters. They do that there. It's pretty uh different than other clubs i've seen but also something that's a little bit fun is again this is a drama uh class uh lesson where you take one of your favorite songs or any song and instead of singing it like a karaoke when we've had in benica before but you present it so i don't know if you guys have seen uh deadpool versus wolverine or if you were just in eighth grade in 1999 
and 2000, like myself, you know, most of you probably heard this song somewhere before. But again, it's a way to kind of present it in a fun way, kind of break uh, the monotony up a little bit. And the cool thing is if you could bring a song that's a little bit different than uh, normal, it's a little silly. And being silly is great. So I'm going to give you an example of what we are going to try to do um, in the future as just like a warm up. Right? It's not going to be really long, but we're going to create a role warm up speaker um, as well. But follow along. Don't sing along because I'm not singing. Presentation example. <clears throat> I, I'm doing this tonight. You're probably going to start a fight. I know this can't be right. Hey, baby, come on. I loved you endlessly. When you weren't there for me. So now it's time to leave and make it alone. I know that I can't take no more. It ain't no lie. I want to see you out that door. Baby, bye, bye. Bye. Don't want to be a fool for you. Just another player in your game or two. You may hate me, but it ain't no lie. Baby, bye, bye, bye. Don't really want to make it tough. I just want to tell you that I've had enough. It might sound crazy, but it ain't no lie. Baby, bye, bye, bye. You just hit me with the truth. Now, girl, you're more than welcome to, so give me one good reason. Baby, come on. I've lived for you and me. Now, I really come to see that life would be much better once you're gone. I know I can't take no more. It ain't no lie. I want to see you out that door. Baby, bye, bye, bye. So that's kind of like uh, the example of what you could do with the song, and you can make it your own with facial expressions, dramatic pauses, uh, body language, intonation, you know, and it's kind of fun. But again, it's a kind of a way to kind of act out something a little bit different. And again, public speaking is like an act. Fun fact, most of us, uh, you know, we're, our day-to-day, -day, we're kind of boring. And I'm not saying that's an insult, is that we can't be on all the time. Right? It's like you, you know, people say if, if you ever met someone in life that's super happy all the time, you're hiding something. Can't be. Right? You gotta be like normal and then ooh, happy. Like, you know, Alicia, normal, McDonald's, bam, happy, normal, right? Me, right? Same concept. Oh, chicken nuggets, boom. But you're gonna come back down. And you hope you don't go back down past normal, right? You're going, and oh, I'm sad. Come back to normal. So again, these are things that you got to be able to take your expression, right? When we're giving uh, speeches, you don't always want to be yourself. Oh, my God. What are you doing to me, Alicia? You don't. Oh, I love them so much. I love Wendy's uh, spicy chicken nuggets, but they don't have them here in Indonesia. Uh, but yes, McDonald's chicken nuggets are dope. Anyways, guys, it's 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 a good exercise. So in the future, the idea is that one, you get to really break down a song lyrics and listen to them and kind of like, you know, fun fact that in sync song is actually a song not about a girl, but about their old manager who stole from them. And they're actually saying goodbye to him. But again, they were teenage heartthrobs, so they had to be singing to girls. So or about a girl that was mean. But it was actually a terrible uh guy who stole from him. Anyways. This is something we want to introduce because it's fun, right? Take a silly song. By the way, the song that I got a C on in uh, 11th grade drama class 
was a, a rap song, Big Timers Still Fly. It was Gator Boots, Pimped Out Gucci Shoes. So, you know, a corny white guy talking about songs like that where I got kind of laughed at, uh, laughed at and laughed with. But that's what we're going to do in the future. So if you like that, you come up with a silly song and you just kind of act it out, right? Have fun. And it'll kind of lighten up the room. Because I see like Intan kind of laughing at me uh, when I was doing that as well because she knew the song right away. Right? Right, Intan? Yeah. So if you guys like that, uh, cool. If you didn't like it, don't tell anybody. Right? I don't need any evaluation for it. I thought it was awesome. All right. So <laughs> uh, our meeting is pretty much over. So I'm going to ask some of our guests. What do they think about this meeting? I was annoyed you didn't see. See, that's the point, right, Alicia? In our heads, this got me going. In our heads, we want it. We know the beat to the song, right? Don't take an obscure song and do it. That's not fun. It's like poetry. Take a song that everyone knows and we can't help. Ain't no lie, baby. Bye, bye, bye. See, we, it's in our head. But it's, that's the exercise. The exercise is not to sing it, but to speak it and present it. That's the struggle. So, yes, it does annoy people. Sorry, Alicia. Anyways. Postmaster Leone, did I pronounce that right? Yes. Cool. How did you enjoy this meeting of ours today? Oh, I'm really enjoying it. So, yeah, there's an uh, interesting project tonight. Both are interesting because I also going to deliver the same L for P1 project, just like Mr. Resources of Naples. So, yeah. That's, That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Good luck. It's always good to be able to go to different clubs and you can see other people doing it to give you kind of like a perspective. Like, ooh, I could do it that way. I won't do it that way, but I'll do it this way. So I'm, I'm glad you yeah. came and it kind of worked out. Um, all right. Why why you hate her, Alicia? Uh, so funny. Uh, okay. Uh, Gettison, tell us about your, I think, First trip to second trip here and being yeah. voluntold. Yeah, it's my second trip here and I think it's comfy. It's quite comfy. And yeah, I did achieve my goal of regulating my energy for the Monday. Thank you. Good. And I really like your idea. I really like your idea of the poem thing. Uh, the thanks, poem man. song thing. The song poem thing. Yes. Try it. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was my little inspiration. Fun fact. Um, so again, not many people know my wife was in Surabaya uh, last week. I was there two weeks ago with her, but I had to start my job last week. And one thing I do uh, is I like to drink beer, but not a lot. But when I start drinking a little bit too much, I actually become really creative. And I thought about that idea when I was at a Toastmasters meeting and I was drinking a little bit. I'm like, oh. I gotta write this one down. That sounds pretty good. Fun fact: most of my ideas when I'm drinking are not uh, yeah. that great, but this one I think is good. So thanks. Yeah, bro. do invite me when when this happens. I will. You'll be voluntold to participate, maybe. All right, Toastmaster Yvonne, in your picture of a field, kind of blurry, but still, please tell us uh, again. You've been here many times. <laughs> How did you enjoy today? Thank you. Yeah, it's really fun and interesting. I, I, I like the topics, table topics, topics. I think that is very interesting. <laughs> I like it so much. It's, uh, I never think about what is very interesting topics, these topics. Thank you. And right. thank you. And meeting is so fun and interesting. Yeah, I love it so much. Thank you. We thank love you, you when you come here. Hopefully your camera works next time. All right, no, Ap thank you. Awesome, you're welcome, Apri. All right, Apri, tell us when your next meeting is and other stuff that you do as an area director. Uh, actually, our next meeting for Malang is we will have conduct offline, <laughs> offline meeting. Great. When is uh, it? What day is on it? On Friday. On Friday, and okay. yeah, on Friday in Malang and. For online, we will conduct on every Thursday, just like as always. Thursday at 7 p.m. 
on right. 17 October. Right, good. Again, the idea is still important to tell us because, you know, you never know. I might be in my lawn by myself one day and go to a meeting. Who knows? Uh, E.T., tell us uh, when Empire Toastmasters meeting is next. Our next meeting is on the 17th. Oh, 15. And we have joint meeting of Area G2 on 25th. Awesome. Cool. Uh, Distinguished Toastmaster Alicia Curtis, can you please tell us uh, more about your time here and your next meeting as well? Right. I've enjoyed my night tonight with everyone. And no, I don't like Tay Tay. I cannot stand her when she can Shake it off. Shake it off. Oh, God. I hate her with a passion. Sorry. It's just uh, grates me. Um, my next meeting is actually tomorrow. Tomorrow at um, uh, 12.30 p.m. Uh, Malaysian time. Malaysian standard time. So 12.30 p.m. So 12.30 p.m. for you guys. And that would be advanced hashtag ardent speakers. And you probably know one of the members, Patricia Yap, is a member there. And Alicia Curtis. Yep, and Alicia Curtis. All right. And real quick, uh, Leon, Leone, tell us your next meeting real quick. Okay, so our next meeting would be this Friday. Oh, next Friday. Uh, for, for October. Um, sorry, 11th October. It is going to be educational session, living side by side with artificial intelligence. We're going to have a fun table topic where we're going to be like this evil AI. And then we're going to play like a werewolf type of table topic. So come and join us on the SBD Toast Club if you have the time. Awesome. Yeah, they always have so much fun there. All right, uh, Jenison, your uh, next meeting for your club? I'm a member of three clubs. Which one do you want to know? <laughs> All three. I don't, you know, we have, we still have time. I'm still trying to get us out early. All right. So next week, next Thursday, we have Pacific International Advance, which is my, yeah, the club which I am exco of. It's online, 7, 7.30 Indonesia time. 7.30 Indonesia time. The other one is my Japanese bilingual club. Which is next next Thursday, same time as Pacific, so it's alternating Thursdays. Yeah, hit me up if you're interested. I'm gonna post it on D eighty seven, D eighty seven group. All right, cool, excellent, good job. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Yvonne, are you a Toastmaster also? Do you have a meeting in your club? Actually, uh, currently, I'm just a break in time <laughs> in Toastmasters. Yeah. Oh, cool. Then you can be a member, yeah, be a member something, here. Or uh, something busy for me <laughs> currently. Yeah. You you already show up enough here. You might as well be a member. Be cool. We would not say no. Anyways, awesome. All right. So very well done job, everyone. Good job to the speakers, Intan and Natalie. Good job to the evaluators and our timer table topics. This meeting is adjourned. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Have a good Monday. See you next two weeks. Thank you. Oh, Thank yeah. You. Two weeks from now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.